Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be discussing construction and working of induction potentiometer. Before watching this video, I would like to tell you one thing. In order to watch the previous video, you can able to go to the description box of this particular video or you can able to click the I button. So I have put up the complete video in the description box. You can go through that. This is a complete course. You will be getting the total video of about this particular uh, course, namely sensors and transducers. Let us discuss about what do we mean by induction potentiometer? How does it operate and what are the major applications of induction potentiometer? Moving on to the introduction. What do we mean by an induction potentiometer? Induction potentiometer is basically a linear synchro device which provide an accurate then linear in indication of the shaft rotation. It is mainly used for the position sensor. You can use the induction potentiometer as a position sensor. With respect to the rotation of shaft, you can able to get the output voltage. Okay, so the shaft rotation that is directly proportional to the output voltage V. That is actually happening in case of induction potentiometer. And also the magnitude of output voltage that is proportional to the angular displacement as I told just now. Theta, that is namely angular displacement that is directly proportional to the voltage or you can call EMF across the winding or stator coil. The phase relationship indicates the direction of shaft rotation. So these are the basic introduction to induction potentiometer. So we need to know what is a Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. So I'm going to share the link of Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. I have made a detailed description about Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction uh, in the lecture series of basic electrical engineering that is available in the description box as well as I button. You can go through what is Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. Okay, so let us conclude the particular introduction part. The output voltage is directly proportional to the angular displacement. That is a basic idea about induction potentiometer. Let us discuss the construction details of induction potentiometer. So we are, we are having rotor with a suitable winding. You can able to see the rotor part is available. Okay, it is having a the special type of structure and it is having the certain winding. Rotor winding is connected over there. You can able to see the stator part. See, stator with a suitable winding. This is actually the stator winding and the rotor is connected to the shaft. For, for example, it is directly connected to a mechanical body or a moving body where I need to measure the angular displacement. So our ultimate goal is to measure the angular displacement of the mechanical body, maybe mechanical shaft. So the rotor part is directly connected to the mechanical body that is very clearly visible here. So theta represents the angular displacement. Okay, we can write it as angular displacement. Okay, angular displacement. Okay, note on this angular displacement. Theta is the angular displacement. So theta is nothing but omega t. Theta is nothing but omega into t, where omega is the angular frequency and t is the time. So you can uh, make out the relation also. Our ultimate goal is to measure the what is the angular displacement of the shaft. And we can able to see the stator winding. It is arranged like this. And the output voltage is collected across the stator winding. Okay. And we are going to provide say 0 to 60 volt. Approximately 0 to 60 volt AC that is going to provide at the rotor. Okay. So these are the construction details about induction potentiometer. Now I wanted to explain how does induction potentiometer operate. So basic working principle is Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. In addition to that, I wanted to add few more points. First of all, we are supposed to provide the excitation supply to the rotor winding. For example, 0 to 60 volt, say 0 to 60 volt, we are going to provide at the rotor winding. This is your rotor winding, number one. Number two, the rotor is directly connected to the shaft. As the shaft rotates, the rotor is also started operating, started rotating. Okay. Now, whenever I am going to provide the supply to the rotor, the rotor winding is getting energized. So, the magnetic field will be generated. Therefore, the magnetic flux that will be interacting with the stator part, you can see the stator part. As per the electromagnetic induction, uh, the what I can say, the induced EMF that is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage. Okay, therefore, if 
there are n number of turns i can write e is equal to minus n d5 by dt okay e is equal to minus n d5 by dt why minus has come means because of lens rule n is the number of turns so with respect to the flux generated from the rotor that rotor will be the rotor flux will be interacting with the stator then emf will be induced in the stator winding therefore definitely will be getting the output but you know that rotor is continuously rotating with respect to the rotation of the shaft so with respect to the movement with respect to the angular displacement theta the output voltage is also getting varied so the output voltage will be the variation like the sinusoidal variation depends on the rot movement depends on the movement of the rotor the output voltage is also varying so we can able to write the theta angular displacement theta is directly proportional to uh, the output voltage okay output to voltage so based on the output voltage we can able to identify the uh, the angular displacement of the rotor so that is a working principle of induction motor okay majorly we have to focus on electromagnetic induction faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction then you have to state how you are going to measure the stator voltage with respect to the rotation of the rotor you are able to get the stator voltage normally it will be just like a sinusoidal variation and also uh, this device will more accurate if the rotation range is in between plus or minus 45 degree that is another speciality okay so i have explained the construction already so you can able to see rotor is attached to the transmitting shaft on the primary is wound then stator wound with the secondary winding that is very clear uh, the winding are designed such that output voltage is directly proportional to the angular position of the rotor so it is also called one of the position sensor and uh, it provides the linearity in the range of plus 45 and minus 45 degree uh, afterwards it becomes non linear that is one of the setback of induction potential meter it is one type of linear synchro uh, if the rotation is lies in between plus or minus 45 degree let us list out few drawbacks of induction potential meter there are certain errors which are occurring in induction potential meter the errors are as follows mechanical asymmetry that is one of the reason as the structure you can able to see the structure of rod or how it has been connected to the shaft the as the structure as the structure seems it shows some kind of mechanical asymmetry and variable output impedance is also uh, reason for certain amount of error it affects the accuracy that means the uh, with respect to the po rotor position you should get the output voltage but because of the impedance variation there is a changes in the output voltage that is also another issue thermal effect is also matters a lot okay heating effect that is also matters a lot uh, for the errors occurrence of errors in induction potential meter major advantage is even small uh deviation in the shaft position you will be getting the output voltage that means it shows high resolution so that is the major advantages of induction uh, potential meter and it is quite simple also it works based on faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction not that much uh, no, technical knowledge is required to understand and the maintenance of this particular induction potential meter so in this session i have discussed what do we mean by induction potential meter what is the working principle of induction potential meter what about the construction details of induction potential meter also discussed in the particular session and finally we have discussed certain errors what are the reason for causing the errors in induction potential meter and finally uh, we found out the major advantage also okay so this is a brief discussion about induction potential meter so let me know if you are having any queries please do put up in the comment box if i want to add, add any more videos related to sensors and transducer you can able to put up the comment please provide the comment and thank you very much for your kind support as of now i would like to uh, i am requesting you to continue the same support for the coming um, upcoming days your support is my motivation okay so if you are watching this video first time please to subscribe and uh, please to click on the bell icon when i am going to upload a new video for every week uh, you will be getting notified so kindly click on the bell button as well so please don't forget to share this video with your friends those who are uh, preparing electrical and electronics engineering electronics and communication engineering instrumentation engineering okay so kindly share with the video with those who are uh, who those who whom i work the video is very much needful finally thank you very much for watching this video in the coming session i am going to discuss about um, what what do you mean by mems one of the very important concept in the area of instrumentation system fine finally thank you